My name is Doug Pengelly. I'm from Torolug in Toronto. And this is my bridge. And this is a massive bridge here. How long is this? 40 feet. Okay. What would prompt you to start such an incredible project here? So I made a bulk purchase of Lego and I knew I was getting a whole bunch of these big pieces and I wanted to make one big project while I had them all in one place. So I looked around at ideas about things I could do and I thought a bridge would be kind of fun. Yeah, so when you decided on the bridge, how did you kind of start coming up with the concept for it and how it was going to come together? Were there sketches or how did that work? So I did a bunch of research on bridges to begin with. So like I can tell you more about bridges than you probably want to know. It's actually really cool because it's like I'm kind of a frustrated engineer at best anyway. So I've learned a lot about bridges and a lot about Lego and I kind of like pushing the limits of how, how Lego can work and uh, how big something can be and still be strong and hold itself together. Very cool. So if you want to take us to the, the kind of supports here and how, how this the thing does hold together. Some example supports here. So this is like a, a prototype of uh, the, the bridge structure. Mm -hmm. And I did this when I knew that Lego was coming. And I designed it so that I could figure out how to, how to set it all together. And so this has like a beam that's along here. And I've got little uh, L brackets in here. And the L brackets hold the beams together. And so with this, I was able to kind of troubleshoot and figure stuff out so that when I got all the blue uh, beams in or the bricks in, I could put them all together and make it work. Okay. So the other thing is that I kind of knew that it, it had to be able to move if I'm going to go to a show. So this is all built in four foot sections. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at there's like little colored bricks and basically I used red, orange, yellow, green. And this way I can get the bricks or get the sections in the correct orientation so that they lined up right. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, this way, it, it breaks down. It, it takes a little longer to go together, but it comes down fairly quickly, and it can be put away and packed and stored pretty well. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. And then you also incorporated lights, so how did that work throughout the build? So, like, my hobbies are, are like, Lego, amusement parts, electronics, and beer. <laughs> and I somehow, like, find a way to, like, mold that into everything I do, which leaves, like, a really interesting life. I got these lights that I thought would be kind of neat to put in here, and this is called a cable stay bridge. And uh, if you go on the internet, there's like a, a big one in Normandy, the Pont Normandy. Uh, there's a Charles Ravenel Bridge in the States, and there's one in Abbotsford, BC. And some of the pictures I've seen of them, they have lights on them. And uh, when it's lit up at night and these lights are all flashing, it's really, really beautiful. So I thought, I could probably do that. And then I got like these strings of Christmas lights, and I stuck them all inside. And then uh, I wound up making a microcontroller and a, a little LED driver. And so that way I can make a program to make all the lights kind of flash in different ways and do all sorts of shiny things. <laughs> Perfect, yeah, and for World of Lights it works, looks really great, so I think that worked well. And then if, if you take us to the levels here, so you've got kind of a road and a train level here? Yeah, so I also like trains, <laughs> in case I need another hobby. And, uh, and I actually built this with my friend Jason and Peter and Jen, and they like minions, so they helped me put it all together, and they put all the minions on the bridge here. <laughs> Uh, and then, so we have train tracks in the lower part of the bridge, which is similar to like the Bay Bridge in, in California, in, um, in, uh, outside of the Bay Area. And um, it's always kind of fun when you have like motion going on. It's always fun when there's stuff to see. And like, I've been to a couple of these shows now and watching little kids like look at it and go, oh, 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 and they start to squeal at the light and they look at it and like, ah. Oh. So it was really fun to kind of have it accessible and have like a lot of little Easter eggs and little fun things people look at. And because like, you want to be serious, but you also want to have fun. And you want to not take yourself too seriously. Exactly, for sure, yeah. So when you take this home then, will it just be stored in the smaller sections? Do you try to keep it together at all? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, the whole point of it was that before I start using these pieces, uh, I'll make one big thing and use them all up in one shot. And then um, you can always, there's so many things you can do with these bricks. So uh, what will probably happen is that it'll sit in the corner and maybe I'll do one or two more shows with it. Uh, and then I'll start taking these apart and I've got some plans for these blue bricks. Um, a little clue is that my, my other hobbies and interests are roller coasters. <laughs> and uh, so they'll be seen again whether they're on the bridge or something else. Yeah. Well, very impressive. I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me about the build here and thanks for bringing it to Brick World. Hey, thanks so much. Thank you.